Coming up on Hands on Android, I show you how to take some of Android 11's features and bring them into Android 10 right now. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remote. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped promotes clean hygiene when it comes to shaving. Get 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com, code HOA. Hello and welcome to Hands on Android. I'm Jason Howell. Now, Android 11 is right around the corner. Uh, it's not going to be too much longer, and we're going to have Android 11 starting to install on some of our devices. I happen to have the Pixel 4 XL, and I'm pretty certain I'm going to get it day one once it's finally available later this summer. Um, so it really depends on the phone that you have, and there's some features in Android 11 that are worth waiting for. We're still kind of waiting to hear a little bit about some of the key features, but we know some of these uh, functions in advance because of the developer previews that have been dropping the past couple of months. I've taken a look at the developer previews and picked out a few features that are expected in the final release of Android 11 that you can actually get running on your Android 10 device right now. And I'm gonna take some time to show you how to do that and what to install. So let's dive right in and take a look at some features from Android 11 running on your Android 10 device. So the first feature that I'm going to show off here from Android 11 is notification history, which is super helpful. There have been apps to kind of fill the void in the past, but now in Android 11, it's going to be baked into the OS natively. So on the left, I have my Pixel 3a. On my right, I have my Pixel 4 XL. Uh, the 3A is running Android 11, on the right is Android 10. So on the left, I'll go ahead and show you real quick in Android 11, uh, the latest developer preview, we have this little history button that's part of the notifications. If I tap that, boom, it takes me to the notification history. We've talked about this in, a, in an earlier episode of Hands on Android. And you can see it's kind of like a running tabulation, a running list of any notifications that have come through. Maybe I dismissed something and I wanted to get to it later, or maybe I just wanted to kind of get a sense of just how many notifications I'm getting from a particular app. This is kind of a quick way to glance at that. And having that embedded into the notification shade uh, is really handy. You can just jump right to it. Well, now over here on the right, uh, Android 10 does not have this, of course. If I go into uh, my notification shade, it just says manage. This actually takes me to uh, app notifications on a per app basis. So I can do some management of notifications, uh, but I, it's, I'm not really getting the same contextual uh, listing, the con same contextual layer of all of that exact notification history. So uh, check the Play Store for an app called Filterbox. This is actually a really well-designed app that does notification history for you. It does a number of other things. But as you can see right here on Filterbox, I've got a list of notifications that are currently in my notification tray and notifications down below that have been dismissed. So if I want to reach back in time and find a notification that I got rid of, uh, however long ago, I can go in here and jump right into it and figure out exactly, you know, where it's from. Um, some, you know, expanded information here as far as what happened, when it was first posted, when I actually dismissed it, that sort of stuff. Um, and it's really handy to kind of get at those notifications. But this is called Filterbox. And so just real quick, so you know kind of what else it does, uh, it filtering is a big part of this. So it allows you to create rules around notifications that you do not want to receive. Now you can do this in settings, of course, uh, but here you can manage it in the app and you know you can get a little bit more detailed as far as what happens, um, what needs to exist within that notification in order for it to cancel it, that sort of stuff. Outside of that, you get some analytics in the app that are actually really helpful to give you a sense of, of uh, kind of your notification throughput, uh, which apps are sending so many more versus the others. And, you know, Twitter seems to be uh, sending a lot of notifications to my device, that sort of stuff. And then, of course, further settings. So you could actually set this uh, so that uh, it keeps notifications for up to 30 days, 
which I'm not really quite sure on Android 11 how far that history is going to go. But 30 days is quite a few. I don't know if you necessarily need that many, but if you want it, you you have it. And then, of course, you have some biometric locks uh, functionality. So it requires you to unlock with your fingerprint or your face scan uh, in order to access that information and a whole lot more. So very useful functions there. More uh, more built out, more feature rich than what we currently have in the Android 11 developer preview, uh, but still notification history nonetheless. All right, the next feature that I want to show off uh, from Android 11 is a, a built-in screen recorder. And how this surfaces in Android 11 developer preview right now is that you actually get to it in your quick settings. You can see right there, screen record start. If I tap that, it asks me if I want to record my audio, show touches on the screen, hit start. And this little red indicator up there counts down and boom, the screen recording is going. Uh, you can see there that it's recording. When I want to stop, I just tap that and it stops. And I should have in my notification, the screen recording saved. So that's how it runs and operates in Android 11, kind of as part of the operating system. Now, again, this is an app category that has existed for a very long time. Google likes to do this. They take a look at features that developers are creating and that users are looking for, and eventually they bake it into the OS. And that's what they've done with Android 11. Uh, in Android 10, what I was looking for was a screen recorder app that also allows you to put it in the quick settings. And I found this one, search for screen recorder by developer named Kimsey929, 929. And you'll find this app, it actually does more than just screen recording, which we'll get to in a second. But does it do, does it replicate what Android 11 does? And if we go up into our quick settings and over, you can see I've added a quick setting tile for screen recorder and it operates much in the same way. I tap it to go, hit start, it counts down. And once it's going, we've got our little red indicator up top. It's now recording everything that I do on the device. If I want to stop it, I can go to the notification, hit stop, and the recording is saved to my device to allow me to do whatever I need to do with it. So the integration is very similar, right? You can find it in the quick settings. If you like knowing that it's going to be there waiting for you instead of having to jump into your app tray to launch it, that's a great way to find it. I should also mention that if you add it, if you edit your quick settings tiles, you'll find other quick settings from this app. In particular, you'll find a screen capture if you want to do like an image. Uh, record audio if you want to record audio. And then a floating toolbox, which is kind of here let's go ahead and add that up there sorry i forgot that i was editing if i tap that i get this little floating toolbar that allows me to jump right into a recording uh, and stop and all that sort of stuff so i'm going to go ahead and get rid of that that is screen recorder and you can see like i said uh it does video uh screen capture but it also does screenshots and uh and a bunch of other features uh it's really straightforward it's got a nice nice a detailed list of settings so you can get in there and determine you know what the audio source is of course usually with screen recorders it's impossible to record internal audio unless you're rooted or unless you're on certain devices which allow for it for some reason the oneplus uh, 8 pro that i have does this right out of the box it's kind of crazy uh, so some phones do the pixel 4 does not so you're limited to recording audio through your mic and that's just the way that Android has been built to be secure. So again, that's Screen Recorder by developer Kimsey929. Be sure to add the Screen Recorder uh, quick setting tile and uh, you'll complete the Android 11 look. This episode of Hands On Android is brought to you by Manscaped. They've redesigned the electric trimmer with its new third dimension lawnmower 3.0 featuring a ceramic blade to prevent manscaping accidents. Comes with a 90 minute battery, a USB charging dock, LED light, and 7,000 RPM motor with quiet stroke technology. Subscribers get a new replacement blade refill every three months. Get 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com code HOA. 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com code HOA. Manscaped.com code HOA. The last feature we're going to show off here from Android 11 that we're going to replicate in Android 10 is syncing the dark theme with a time of day, more specifically sunrise and sunset 
Uh, a lot of people want to make it so that dark theme turns on when it's dark outside uh, and light theme turns on when it's light outside. Makes a whole lot of sense, doesn't it? Well, so on Android 11, let's go ahead and jump into the settings and go to display and dark theme. You can see in Android 11, this little schedule button, which does exist in Android 10, but one of the new features is turns on from sunset to sunrise. This is very easy to do in Android 11. You just turn it on and uh, it will automatically kind of sync to whatever the sunset and sunrise is uh, in your particular time zone. It's all done automatically and everything switches automatically for you. So we're gonna go ahead and do that on Android 10, but uh, it's going to be a little bit more complicated. So the app that we're going to use is called Auto Dark Mode. And when I launch it, after you download it from the Play Store, you're going to get this, this screen, which may be a little intimidating. You may remember from an earlier episode of this show, uh, episode 10, where I show you how to install the, the developer ADB uh, tool set, platform tools, that allows you to use your computer to, to open up particular permissions on your phone. So it's a little bit more advanced stuff. That is required in order for this app to work. And this is kind of the walkthrough for it. Uh, may look intimidating. It's really not that difficult. Uh, you can refer to episode 10 to find those tools. But essentially what you want to make sure of is that in your settings, you know, you've tapped on the build number seven times, right? That's how, uh, that's how we open up developer mode. I've already done it. No, I haven't. Uh, one step away from being a developer. Go ahead and do that. Enter my pin code. My pin, my pin rather. And I'm now a developer. So if I go out to my settings, uh, let's see here, where is it? Just hidden. It's in system developer options. And I want to go down to USB debugging and turn that on. This allows for the USB port on the phone to be uh, used and, and on, in a more advanced way when plugged into the computer, a little bit more advanced access. So now I've got it active here and we can move on to bringing the computer into the equation. So as you can see, I have my MacBook Pro on the left and I have my uh, Pixel 4 XL on the right running Android 10. Um, basically what I have here is a terminal, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and plug my Pixel 4 XL into the USB of my MacBook Pro. When I do that, it recognizes the connection to the computer. The reason I'm getting this permission screen here is because of the USB debugging feature that I just activated on the phone. I'm gonna go ahead and allow it. It basically says I trust this computer and I allow it. And now the computer can talk directly to the phone in the way that I need. So I have my platform tools uh, pretty easily found in my home directory. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that over here, paste and enter. And now I'm in uh, platform tools. So you can see right there in the platform tools uh, folder. What I like to do at this point is just make sure that the device is connected properly. So uh, pound slash ADB devices sends that through and it says list of devices attached and it has my device here. So that tells me that the connection is solid. Now in the app in automatic dark theme, it gives you a string to then put into, uh, in my case, terminal, which is what I'm using. And we'll go ahead and print that on the screen uh, because it's a long string, but you'll get it in the app as well. And if you put that in uh, exactly as it shows and it gives you instructions for Mac and for PC, you should have no problem. I put it through and I just get the prompt again. Essentially, it's very, uh, very uneventful when it actually succeeds. But now that I've put through that command, I'm going to go ahead and go to the app, go to automatic dark theme, and boom, it lets me in instead of giving me that screen that kind of stopped me at that point. I can go ahead and enable it, uh, change the light theme now. It, it knows that it's light outside, yes and everything should change. Now what you get here in the time slots area is you get the functionality to tie this to sunrise and sunset, uh, just the same way that you did in Android 11. As you can see, the time 
the actual time settings go away because it's automatically syncing to when it knows sunrise and sunset is. Or I could have that set for particular time slots and uh, drop that in there. When that time slot hits, boom, the entire phone switches over to dark theme automatically or back to light, light theme, uh, depending on how you have it set up. So it's essentially the same functionality that you get on Android 11 with a couple, maybe a few extra features. Um, you can also have this feature set, which essentially means it's not going to switch while you are staring at your phone. <laughs> so if it does, if the time or if the time hits or it determines that now is the time to jump to dark theme, but you're actually playing around with your phone, it waits until the next time you power off your display for it to make this, the change. So it's more of a seamless transition. It's not like right in your face as it happens. That is auto dark theme. Definitely check that out if you want to replicate uh, that feature from Android 11. All right, so there you have it. Three awesome features that you can put onto your Android 10 device right now to get a sense of what's going to be hitting phones when they get Android 11 when it releases later this summer. Now, Google has revised the beta release schedule slightly. Uh, they've just announced the beta launch show, which is essentially, from what we understand, a replacement for Google I.O., which is not happening because of COVID-19. Uh, so that is scheduled for June 3rd at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. We will be doing live coverage of this show, of this beta release show that Google is holding on that morning at twit.tv slash live. It'll be me, Ron Richards, and Florence Ion. So it's basically all about Android covering the beta launch show from Google. So make sure and check that out then. Stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, you've got some new features to make you excited for Android 11. Email us at handsonandroid at twit.tv. Send in your questions, and uh, if they work into the show, I'll do my best to answer them on the show. Really appreciate it. Also, you can subscribe by going to twit.tv slash HOA. There you're going to find all the ways to subscribe in audio and video formats to this show, as well as link out to YouTube. If that's where you like to watch your video content, we're there as well. I'm Jason Howell. Thank you so much for watching once again. Hands on Android comes at you next week. We'll see you then. Check out other shows here on Twit TV, including my show, Hands On Photography. On this show, I'm going to show you how to get the most out of your camera, as well as be a better post processor. So head on over to twit.tv hop and subscribe now.